Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry in the introduction to Quantitative Chemistry module. This is uh, video number five and we're looking at mass changes in chemical reactions and really this is just a continuation from what we were looking at in the previous video. So the key question this time around is how can we account for mass changes in chemical reactions? Now hopefully the answer to that question will be fairly obvious but let's have a little bit of a look at some of the potential um, problems that you may have as we look at different types of chemical reactions. So let's start with a nice simple one, the, the uh, decomposition of copper carbonate. This is a uh, bluish green kind of solid powder. Um, when we heat it up, uh, it forms a very nice little reaction where the carbon dioxide gas uh, is released and uh, we get left with copper oxide. Now, it's a nice easy equation to balance. Hopefully you've already gone through and started to look at one copper, one carbon and three and one plus two is three oxygens. So we've already got a balanced equation here which is really nice. Now if you've carried out this experiment in the past you've probably bubbled the um, carbon dioxide into something like lime water just to actually identify its presence. Maybe you've gone a step further and, and had some sort of quantitative analysis based on the mass of the precipitate that you have formed, the in that case calcium carbonate which would be formed. The problem that we have of course is if we were to calculate the mass or to weigh our solid at the beginning of this experiment and then to weigh the solid again at the end of the experiment allowing for the fact that this is kind of a bluish green blue green powder and this is a black powder and therefore they clearly must be different substances we've had a color change uh, the masses mass of solid initial is not equal to the mass of solid final So how do we apply the law of conservation of mass in this situation? Well, hopefully what you'd realize is that the mass of the final solid is going to be slightly less than that of the initial solid. And because this is less then if then any shortfall, so the difference should be equal to the mass of CO2. According to the law of conservation of mass, we should ensure that we always have the same mass for products as we do for reactants. In this case, there's only one reactant. We're decomposing copper carbonate. And so therefore, if there is a gas produced, even if that gas escapes, as long as there's only one product that's doing this, then we're OK. We've got a, a way of calculating the mass of that uh, gas just by coming, working backwards and saying, well, whatever the mass of solid is that we have at the end, we subtract that from the mass that we had at the beginning and that'll give us the mass of the gas. And what about something like the decomposition of water? When you uh, electrolyze water as a liquid, uh, what you are producing is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And the problem here, of course, is that both of these products are gases. Also, hopefully you will realize that we've not balanced the equations here. I need two here in order to get two oxygens to balance this one over here. And of course, by putting two in front of the water, I also have to put two in front of my hydrogen gas as well. So just looking at these little ratios, we'll try and keep popping these in for you as we go along. So water is a liquid at standard laboratory conditions, but the two products this time are both gases. So we can't really weigh and use the subtraction method that we used before. So now we actually have to start um, doing some sort of measurement, the gas. Now, just to give you a bit of an idea of where we're going with some of this, we've already looked at a met method of collection of gases, but the collection usually gives us a volume, not necessarily a mass. So we're going to have to figure out how we resolve that little problem, how we convert, we need to convert, get rid of that, we need to convert uh, volume to mass. 
Now, the simplest way to do that is with a density calculation because we know that density is equal to mass over volume, but we've got two things happening here. So it makes life a little bit more difficult and we'll have to come back to this problem um, as we go along or at least have a chat about it in class. Finally, another way, place where we might lose a little bit of mass is in a synthesis reaction, such as what happens when you combine magnesium with oxygen gas uh, and you produce magnesium oxide. Now, magnesium oxide in this case is a solid. We've had a play with this equation before, so we kind of know a ratio is 2 to 1 to 2. Uh, but the problem with this particular solid is that we can lose quite a lot of the solid. We've got a gas at standard laboratory conditions as our reactant and therefore assuming we have no loss of this then we can apply the conservation law in order to work out the actual amount of oxygen in fact you can do this exercise and work out the empirical formula of the magnesium oxide unfortunately sometimes what happens is that this uh, particular reaction when it occurs can produce a very large amount of white smoke and that smoke can just um, rise up above the heated reaction and can be lost from the system so it's very important that we try and make sure that we remember systems need to be closed if they are open systems then we need to have um, a maximum of one um, substance lost from the system otherwise it makes it very difficult for us to calculate things based on the law of conservation of mass now of course we couldn't just leave you with a whole heap of problems and there are ways of solving each of these but they rely on a very important concept called the mole concept and that will be coming up in the next video thanks for watching